Welcome to the Biotopes. Thanks for coming back. Today we're gonna to see part two of our Biotope build. In this first Biotope, it's the Upper Amazon River, also known as the Solomos River in Brazil. This upper stretch of the Amazon is specifically in northwestern Peru. And uh, we are really excited about how this has come along. Can't wait for you to see it. Today we're going to finish out the substrate system. We're going to plant the plants and uh, maybe even add some leaf litter. So thanks for coming back. I can't wait for you to see it. Here it goes. All right, so here we go. We've got the sand in. And I start with a layer of clay sand, which is pretty fine. But then I finish that with some pool filter sand, which is a little bit more coarse and has some, uh, you know, different colors in the granules. I then use some pea bevels just for some accents in the different areas. Uh, I've got my Amazon swords planted and just some uh, damp paper towels over the top because I'm not finished filling up the tank, as you can see. And, um, it's going pretty well. See our wood structure here on the right. And that's really a homemade wood structure. So I've got some more water in the tank. You can kind of see it uh, filling out. There's some of the swords there. Um, and just some of the details <clears throat> around the plants. In the back here you can see I've got some sword leaves that have dried out a bit. So. I think after I fill it out, I'm going to have to take those out. Here's some detail uh, pea pebbles around that one pleco cave. And these pea pebbles you just get for a huge bag at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot for next to nothing. There's one ram sword snail. This piece of wood is a bunch of branches glued together. Um, that main piece right there has cement at the base and I've glued those sticks to that piece. You can see here in the light a bunch of, these are all copepods that were just allowed to proliferate in the tank, uh, which is a great uh, ecosystem that I'm starting for our fish. Without fish, these will just kind of grow on their own. And um, you can see the detail in the sand there. I just used some uh, Gorilla Glue for the wood. And you can see the depth of the sand here. You can see it's uh, you know about three fingers high. And I just built that up as you saw in some of the previous uh, video. <clears throat> Here's a look at the sump. You can see it's just a DIY trickle filter down to my pump. And then here's the tank fully filled. As you can see, I've got some Amazon frog bit. Whoop, sorry, there's my light timer just went off. So let me get that turned back on here. One second, it's, it's Bluetooth and it's on a timer. So let me just get that switched back on. Uh, I was saying I, I've got, I used Gorilla Glue to glue the different pieces of the wood together. It's made up probably about seven or eight different pieces of wood. And I used some, some of that just glue gel with a little bit of cotton balls in some spots. And I just used some sprinkled sand over the joints to make it just kind of hide that glue and cotton. And I think it turned out really well. It kind of looks like a branch fell in and got stuck on that other piece of wood, that old stump. Here's some of the Amazon frog bit. And I've been growing that in some of my other tanks. There's another Pucko cave in the back with some detail pea pebbles. I think this came out really, really nice. You can see close up there that cave and this is some of the detail in the sand. Most of these are your basic Amazon swords. I do have that one, um, I think it's a, it's either a red melon or a red ozalot sword. I can see in the back here some of those dried out leaves. I think I'm just gonna have to take off. 
back by the overflow. And um, I put 10 root tabs uh, underneath those uh, Amazon swords before I planted them and before I put the sand in. So it's got some great um, nutrients down in that sand and should, should come out really good for those swords, which are huge root feeders. And I'll probably replace those every you know, four to six months over time. Here's this, that, uh, the lid, which I've got to get fixed. And I think it's turned out really, really well. Here's a look from the end. All right, so I've put in some <clears throat> leaf litter. And uh, you can see it just kind of uh, congregating at the top. I just rinse it off and just put it in. And I just let the water flow and gravity just kind of let the leaves fall where they may. I've got some palm fronds, some uh, magnolia leaves, some live oak, some banana leaves, uh, some oak leaves, um, even a uh, Indian almond leaf in there. So just a good mix of leaves that you would find in you know, the Peruvian type forest, good representations anyway of the leaves, not all exact replicas. Um, but I'll just allow those to get waterlogged and pretty much fall where they may over time. Here's an update on the tank. We are just, I think, three days after I added some of the leaf litter, I just put in a little handful of twigs that are still probably, yeah, they're still floating. I'm gonna show you up here. And I like to just put them in. Um, sometimes I'll rinse them off, but just put them in there and kind of let the current and the flow take it where it goes. If it's you know obstructing something or whatever after it after it sinks, then I'll fix it. But like some of these leaves here that are resting on top of the Amazon swords, I'll probably move those off of that just so they don't uh, kind of impede the growth. Um, probably gonna move maybe some of these palm fronds to the back here on that back wall but I've got some banana leaves in there, um, some leaves from some magnolia, some orange trees. Um, these have all been dried. Some palm fronds, um, some live oak leaves. So just a little mix of one well, of the magnolia leaves are still floating. Some have fallen down. There might be some uh, oak leaves in there. I'm still waiting on, I've ordered some uh, rimless uh, tank kind of uh, cover tabs because this cover is like right on the edge. It's just hanging on by a thread on this Aquarium Masters 75 gallon. And these lids are for a 75 gallon tank, but this opening is just a little bit wider. So I got some rimless tabs for putting lids on rimless tanks and I think that will help so I'm just waiting on that shipment there otherwise just the slightest adjustment on these lids and they fall in so but nothing I can do right now again I'm just kind of waiting for these to get waterlogged and sink the wood structure is holding up really great I'm starting to get some really nice uh, you can kind of see as that camera focuses just some bacteria growth on some of the pieces of wood here, which don't be afraid of, that's, that's good stuff. There's still a very small amount of nitrite in the tank, um, but that's fine. I don't have any inhibitants other than just a couple of 
snails, ram's horn snails. I think I saw one Malaysian trumpet snail in here. Uh, it was kind of hanging on these leaves earlier. I don't see them right now. Let's see if I can see any of the ram's horn. I saw two ram's horn snails in here, but don't see them right now. So anyway, progressing nicely and I'm uh, really happy with it, excited to get these leaves submerged. And uh, again, I like to just do it naturally and let them get waterlogged. And up oh, there's our Malaysian trumpet snail. Hanging out right there. Which would be really good for the sand because we kind of work that up. But anyway, tanks come along really great. Um, again, we'll wait for these sticks and leaves to submerge and then we'll start adding um, probably some a blackworm culture or some other kind of live food culture just to kind of extend the uh, just the ecosystem in the tank and um, so be sure to stay tuned and come along for that ride. Alright everybody that's it for part two on this build. So we've got our leaf litter in there all we've got so far is some copepods and a few snails. We'll get that cycled. In the next video, we're gonna start introducing our first real inhabitants and start building out this tank even more, adding some more tannins, and uh, really excited about getting the livestock into this tank. So be sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for the next update, the part three of our Upper Amazon Peruvian biotope. Can't wait to share it with you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.